This is QTV News Broadcasting from The Gambia, and I am Maria Tusidibe. Our top stories. President Barrow condemns communal clashes. More than 10 officers executed on November 11th, witness alleges. Fode Gasama sworn in, replacing the sacked National Assembly member, Yakumba Jaite. Those are our top stories, and now the news in detail. As reports of rising tensions and violence allegedly over a land dispute emerge from Combo South between the communities of Gunjur and Berending, His Excellency the President expresses his concern. Jaina Basonko has more. President Barrow is advising both sides to exercise maximum restraint and calm. He equally calls on the two communities to allow local authorities and the deployed law enforcement agencies to execute their duties. The president urges people not to take the law into their own hands, especially on matters of land ownership. The government has instituted a land commission where all matters relating to land issues should be addressed. Testifying at the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission, a former warrant officer of the Gambia Armed Forces alleges more than 10 officers were executed on the morning of November 11, 1994. QTV's Ansumana Isonyasi is covering the TRRC proceedings and he now reports. Appearing before Commissioners of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission, Warrant Officer Malang F.S. Kamara today gave his testimony on the November 11, 1994 incident in which more than a dozen officers of the Gambia Armed Forces were allegedly summarily executed at Union Barracks, C4 and the Brikama firing range. The witness claimed that he was on duties at the Communications Unit of the defense headquarters on the night of 10th November 1994, further alleging he received a call from the then council chairman Eya Jame, who instructed him to pass an order onto his superiors instructing them to gun down officers accused of plotting to overthrow the APRC council if they appear at the defense headquarters. I think he gave names up to eight people. Well, let me repeat the names that I have. Yeah. Um, Lieutenant Dot Fowl, mm -hmm. Lieutenant LF Jame, mm -hmm. Sai Jacko, mm -hmm. Lieutenant Bakari Mane, mm -hmm. known as Nancho, Nancho, Lieutenant Bine Minte. Mm -hmm. So we're missing a few names. And Chipril Sei, Lieutenant Basiro Baro, very he, correct. Did the chairman mention his yes, name? Yes, he mentioned his name. You also mentioned Sergeant E.M. Cise. E.M. Cise. Did the chairman mention his he name? He mentioned his name as well. So when Chairman Jame mentioned these eight names, mm -hmm. what exactly did he say should be done about those eight people? He said, if these people should come to the headquarters, inform the guard commander, if these people should come to the headquarters and wanted to force themselves in, open fire on them. For the testifying, the witness accused former council vice chairman Edward Singate of physically participating in the execution of officers arrested in connection to the November 11 foil coup and reportedly fired the shots that killed Sergeant Fafanyang and EMCC. Fafanyang uh, was brought in to the anteroom where Edward was stood. He asked Fafanyang, go and greet your friends. That is the dead, the two dead bodies of uh, Dotfal and uh, Basiru Baro in the truck. According to what I heard, that's what he told him. Go and greet your friends. And when Fafanyang climbed up to see what is in the truck, they shot, he shot, Edward shot him at the back and he fell down. Asked how he felt as a member of the Gami Armed Forces seeing fellow officers who were accused of plotting to overthrow the APRC junta being allegedly executed summarily without charge or tried before a court of law, the witness had this to say. I felt very bad, very bad, and uh, definitely it was very wrong that people that you accuse 
have been plotted to overthrow or whatever they could have done wrong, they are arrested. We could have tried them through the due process of the law, either by court martial or any other law, than taking the law into our own hands, executing people that we've worked with, that we knew. You know, I felt really bad. Meanwhile, the witness has described the events of November 11, 1994 as the darkest day in the history of the Gambia Armed Forces. And Shumane Sonyasi for QTV News. President Barros' newly nominated National Assembly member, Fode Gassama, was sworn in at the National Assembly in Banjul on Monday. Gassama replaces the sacked Yakumbe Jaite. Aliusise reports. There is high security presence here at the National Assembly, where the newly nominated member for the Gassama is set to be sworn in. This follows a court ruling on Friday by the Supreme Court dismissing an injunction filed by the SAC MP Yakumba Jaite. Among other things, Jaite wanted the court to restrain the parliament from swearing in her successor. Administered by the clerk of the National Assembly, Momodu ACC, the new MP for the Gassama took the prescribed oaths of allegiance before officially assuming his seat in the parliament. I, I, for the Gassama, for the Gassama, having been nominated as member of the National Assembly, having been nominated as members of National Assembly of the Republic of the Gambia, of the Republic of the Gambia, do hereby, do hereby, swear that, swear that, I'll be faithful, I'll be faithful, and bear true allegiance, I'll be a true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia, to the Republic of the Gambia, as by law established, as the by law established, that I shall execute, that I shall execute. The functions of member of the National Assembly. The function of the members of the National Assembly. Without fear or favor. Without fear or favor. Affection or ill will. Affection or ill will. According to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. And all the laws of the Gambia. And all the laws of the Gambia. So help me God. So help me God. The ceremony marks the beginning of the first ordinary session of the National Assembly in the 2019 legislative year. It was attended by relatives, friends, and well-wishers of the new MP. Speaker Mariam Jack Denton, while congratulating Gassama, advised him to agree himself with the 1997 Constitution and the standing orders of the Parliament. May I congratulate and welcome the new honourable member to the National Assembly, who has been nominated by the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Honorable members and staff of the National Assembly will provide the collective support as you settle down in this noble assembly. The 1997 Constitution and the standing orders of the Assembly are the primary documents that will guide your work as a member of the National Assembly. It is therefore your duty to acquaint yourself with these two very important documents. For the Gassama promises to live up to expectation in the interest of the country, while thanking President Barrow for his nomination. Being a member of the National Assembly, we have a very, very vital role to play in the society, uh, particularly uh, when it comes to, in terms of uh, national responsibility, which is the primary objective, which everybody should support that. The nomination of Gassama by President Barrow has sparked controversy following the sacking of Yakumba Jaiti on 25th February 2019. What is important is that the president appointed me in the interest, for the interest of the Gambia. It is not a personal interest. He knows that I am going to deliver what is expected from me. As I have rightly said, based on the confidence and the trust he has on me, that is why I was uh, nominated as National Assembly Member of the Republic of the Gambia. On the sacking of Jaite, Gassama, who claims he is still a UDP supporter, said the president has the power to sack Jaite, who is a UDP member as well. He added that Yakuma Jaite equally has the right to take legal actions against her sacking. Reporting for QTV News, I am Aliou Sisi. The Financial Intelligence Unit, FIU, of the Gambia, under the support of the Strengthening Anti-Money Laundering Capacities in West Africa project on Monday, began a three-day training session for lawyers, accountants, notaries, and independent practitioners at a local hotel in Kololi. Omar Pijalo has more on that story. His welcoming remarks, the Director of Financial Intelligence Unit and Gaiba National Correspondent, Al-Haji Dabo, 
said the training will help to improve the anti-money laundering and counter-financing of terrorism regimes in West African states. Money laundering and terrorist financing are serious menaces to society with very detrimental impact on our national economy. This is especially true for Africa, where predicted offenses such as drug trafficking, fraud including document fraud, tax evasion, human trafficking, bribery and corruption are very much prevalent. The perpetrators of these crimes generate illicit funds from these illicit activities, which they try to clean, on, on, uh, clean up and pass off as genuine earnings in order to enjoy that wealth without unwanted suspicion or attention. This is what the time of laundering refers. Uh, to a layman, we could say the process of making dirty money clean. But the dirty here is not the, uh, the debt on the money, but it's the debt on the source of the money, where you get the, fund, the free money from. That, uh, that source is not a clean one. But the money uh, physically is, is, look, looks clean, actually. But we are talking about the source of the money. The CEO of Gambia Institute of Chartered Accounts, Baba Varo, said the outcome of this training program will inform better decision-making by stakeholders to not only implement systems that conform to international best practices, but also promote the integrity and soundness of Gambian financial system. In my capacity overseeing the Institute of Chartered Accountants in the Gambia, I am particularly aware of the uh, uh, pertinent roles accounting professionals play in promoting transparency and accountability in the financial sector. This is so because the various actors in the designated non-financial business and professionals sectors to which chartered accountants belong serves as gatekeepers by virtue of the nature of services they provide as to a wide range of clients. In the Gambia, the Anti-Money Laundering and the Combating of Terrorism Financing Act of 2012 provides that the legal basis for all actors in the financial sector to have in place effective anti-money laundering and combating uh, and the counter-terrorism for uh, counter-financing of terrorism systems to be in place that promotes the integrity of the Gambian financial systems and safeguard if uh, and safeguard it from any abuse. Delivering the opening statement, the Solicitor General and Legal Secretary Cherno Marena said the project is of great benefit to West African states, including the Gambia, in terms of capacity building as well as the establishment and fortification of system aim at combating money laundering and terrorism financing. You want an effective gatekeeper, you need to give him the necessary tools to be able to identify the legitimate and illegitimate entrance into any premises. And for this reason, I mean, the, the gatekeepers need to be capacitized in order to make sure that they recognize and detect those transactions which they are dealing with, which raise the red flag as involving money laundering. Of course, uh, we are all aware that uh, criminals, it's a common saying, that are, are always one step against the law enforcement officers or enforcement agencies. And it also applies here in the case of money laundering. In fact, money launderers are no ordinary criminals. They are the most sophisticated criminals and we can, we can find in our societies. And therefore, it is, it is very paramount that uh, the, I mean, the so-called gatekeepers who are responsible for ensuring that uh, these uh, transactions which are subject to money laundering I mean, activities are uh, detected and nipped in the board, uh, provided with the necessary capacity building initiatives to be able to I mean, uh, do their work efficiently. I'm also aware that uh, legal practitioners have a particular difficulty in the, this endeavor, given that one of the cardinal principles of legal practice is the principle of confidentiality, that is client confidentiality. And therefore, I mean, uh, these new requirements to report money laundering activities poses a very serious, I mean, uh, concern in the, in the legal profession in terms of the balance between the confidentiality that legal practitioners owe to their clients and the responsibility that they owe to society at large in order to, pro to, 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 to report money laundering activities. Reporting for QTV News, I am Omar P. Jalo. Bakote dump site poses a health and environmental risk to residents. For days, smoke engulfed the surrounding area, taking firefighters and private tankers several hours to put out a fire said to have been started by children. 
Momoda Gajaga visited the area and he now reports. These are medical bills of Ibu Job, a resident of Bakote since 1985. He has been battling with cardiac disease for more than a decade and claims that he got his condition from the stench and the smoke he had been inhaling from the dump site. We inhale it, we have problems. Very serious problems we, we have suffered for so many years. Problems I, like what? Chest and certain things, certain, certain chest diseases and the like. I even uh, develop uh, cardiac. I'm a cardiac patient, that's, you can see. That has to do with the heart. Yes, that's how to do with the heart. So after, I used to go and get my treatment at, at Dakar, very expensive. Very expensive. And for how long have you been doing this? For so many years now. For so many years. I'm really affected. Seriously, everybody's affected. Frantic efforts have been made to induce government to act, but to no avail, Ibu claims. I mean, efforts. We, we mobilize here. People, our, our ladies, our young people, everybody went to KMC, medical, every, everywhere. So, you know, to, to try to see how best they can help us, but nothing. And medically also, even people who have suffered from, let's say, illnesses like respiratory problems, the government don't come to no, your no, aid? No, 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 no. It's your own problem. It's your own problem. This is what I'm, it's your own problem. Nima Jaju Sisi, another resident, says inhaling the smoke is disturbing and expresses concern over the health of the children. To be honest, we are deeply affected by the foul smell coming from the dump site and poses a greater health risk to the children. We are urging the authorities to help us. Waste management has been a long-running problem in the Gambia. Lack of disposal or recycling facilities as well as irregular waste collection present formidable difficulties for people who live with the foul reality. And the municipality, which is responsible for collecting and disposing waste, lacks the material and human resources to combat the problem. Uh, this is an issue, we know about it, and uh, we want to tell all residents that this year for sure, not long, you will see that we will resume house-to-house -house waste collection. This would ensure that people don't have to live with waste or throw it in the drains or in the wetlands. And then from there, our next uh, target is to have processing, which is the issue of Bakote, to have it uh, proper processing or to shut it down and move it where we can process the waste properly. But like I said, uh, I'm a mayor whose waste uh, is his number one priority. And this year for sure, the collection will be sorted and inshallah the waste processing as well will make great strides to fixing that. But we've budgeted, like I said, to secure the perimeter fence to prevent these kinds of situations. And also we will be fixing some fire hydrants so the fire service don't have to go far to get resupplied with water. According to Mayor Ben Suda, plans are on the way to deal with waste through several means. It's been more than three decades. The government are trying to get a solution how to deal with this rubbish at this Bakote dump site. But until today, not much could be found about the solution. There has been efforts being put in place to get a recycling place or a recycling plant. Authorities are doing everything possible, but until then, People in this community will continue to live with the impact. Momodu Gajaga, QTV News. The French Teachers Association, in collaboration with the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education on Monday, commenced Francophone celebrations with a week-long awareness campaign on the importance of the French language in our socio-economic development. Babu Karsi has that story. The week-long event will see the participation of 10 schools in the upper basic and senior secondary schools within the Greater Banjul area and Region 2 who would be engaged in quiz, drama play, songs, cultural and recitation of poems. The Gambia being an observer member of the Francophonie since 2018 has taken it upon herself to prioritize the French language in schools curricula. Babu Karjan, French Teachers Association coordinator, says the Gambia is lagging in French despite being colonized by the British, but the country is surrounded by French-speaking countries. If you look at the Gambia now, the Gambia is an English-speaking country. 
colonized by Britain as much as its independence in 1965. But that Gambia today is surrounded by French-speaking countries, whereby they share the same culture. And the link between parents exists since a very long time ago. I think this is the right time for Gambians to come out and learn this language to have, to have their better place in that community. The world is a global village. And why not to learn French, do French, speak French and be a doctor in the hospital. Do French, speak French and be an engineer in the in the office. Something like that. So I think that should be really the agenda for Gambians to come and learn this language for for example for instance an international appointment. For his part, the national coordinator of the competition Andrew Sambu has been telling us more about the week long event very proud to observe uh, this thing because the Ministry of, Sen uh, of Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education is taking the lead to celebrate this thing with the children so that every Gambian will know what is Francophonie. Francophonie is not uh, only for, for the French people. Is like Macron said, is for all the, 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 the French people who are, who are speaking French and also who are learning the French uh, language is now for all of all. All of all, uh, all of us, we need to learn the language and also benefit from the language. We are, we are just uh, trying to, to, to put a generalization of uh, the language. We'll be, we'll be maybe teaching the language from primary to the, the university, is what we are looking for. Uh, we started with a, pilotic, a pilotic, uh, piloting uh, program, and now we are now generalizing in the junior school for all the children who are in grade 9, uh, starting by grade, uh, from grade 7 to grade 9. When you, are, when you reach grade, grade 9, you must do the exam compulsory, not op, uh, for, uh, optional. Despite colonized by the British, the Gambia has bilateral relations with a number of French-speaking countries within the sub-region and beyond, and thus taking French classes as part of school curriculum would help the future leaders to be equipped with the language for national and international use. Babu Karsi, QTV News. Before we end this bulletin, a recap of our main stories. Disturbing reports of rising tensions and violence between the communities of Gunjur and Berending linked to an alleged land dispute prompt expressions of concern from His Excellency, the President. Giving witness testimony at the TRRC, Warrant Officer Malang Kamara of the Gambia Armed Forces alleged that more than 10 officers were executed on November 11, 1994. President Barrow's newly nominated National Assembly member for the Gassama, replacing the sacked Yakuma Jaite, was sworn in at the National Assembly in Banjul on Monday. That's it for this news bulletin. Thank you for watching.